very good morning dear uh, non covidian students hope you all are safe and i am sure uh, you all are following the preventive measures and uh, personal hygiene protocol at this uh, situation here i am dr strinvas professor and head department of prosthodontics for uh, uh, discussing about the part 2 theories of edgeless impressions the conclusion of uh, previous session clearly reflects the meaning of this uh, first statement that is the ideal impression must be in mind before it is in hand so this regard we already discussed about the foundation and remitting structures uh, and micro and macro structures of maxillary and mandibular radicular arches the other statement here reminds us about the importance of preservation of remaining structures or prevention of damage of existing structures so based on this statement the following discussion is formatted that is it is more important to preserve what already exists than to replace what is missing there are various techniques uh, in practice regarding completely edgeless impressions but from prosthodontics perspective it is the negative registration of uh, foundation and peripheral limiting structures obtained with a plastic or a semi plastic impression material with the applied theoretical aspect so today session happens uh, only on theories but not the techniques but whichever is the technique we follow all these aspects are interrelated interrelated each other say for example if clinical situation requires a microstatic impression yes we need to select a elastic impression material with open mouth technique so in that way these techniques will vary according to the clinical situation to understand about uh, the present slide i want you to follow a small demo which can be practiced like uh, hold your left hand wrist tightly with the right hand and start notice the left hand fingers how they are responding to the pressure and please continue it till we finish this slide and other slides uh, projected over here clearly demonstrates how the cellular structures are arranged under rest condition as well as uh, compressed or the load condition and this picture reflects uh, uh, configuration of the capillarity or the vascular supply in the mucosa here this particular arrows demonstrates the condition of the vascular uh, vascular supply in the submucosal level as well as the diminishing of the retibex in the compressed mucosa so the oral mucosa uh, plays a major critical role in protection of underlying bone from masticatory load and provides a cushioning effect so after uh, fabrication of dentures and the patient start using the dentures and start the mastication the oral mucosa which is highly vascular start receiving the functional forces and uh, slowly start developing the hydraulic hydraulic pressure or hydrostatic pressure which is identified as one of the most important aspect and uh, mucosa are forced to tolerate uh, these forces mechanical forces or pressure to protect the connective tissue and underlying bone so once the hydrostatic pressure builds up and leads to the uh, development of capillary pressure slowly the blood flow will decrease and may cause the combination of uh, vascular closure or the capillary closure and the consequences are reduced nutrient and oxygen supply that may lead to the residual rich resorption and this phenomenon progress if progress for longer time that may harm the patient oral health by uh, residual rich resorption this is very much true especially with the mandible because which is mainly supported by the periosteal fluxes of blood vessels and therefore mandible is very susceptible to uh, reduce circulation under occlusal load so 
that's why the clinical recommendation was made and we give instruction to the patient that the dentures should be removed uh, during sleep or at the night times to regain the recovery of blood supply to the mucosa. Uh, suppose if patient has a chronic diseases or conditions like a diabetes mellitus or uh, osteoporosis, the oral mucosa and underlying bone will be more sensitive to the occlusion load and uh, they all show the lower threshold. So now uh, I think you all are experienced how the tissues uh, response under compression uh, by observing your left hand fingers, uh, the numbness or tingling sensation of your uh, uh, left hand fingers. Um, now we can continue with the next slide. Please uh, relax yourself and continue with the next slide discussion. If we uh, look into the development of uh, these uh, theories of impression making, they all developed by uh, in a sequential manner. The first uh, concept was developed by Green Brothers. They named it as a Miko Compressive Impression Technique. This technique has uh, its own advantages and disadvantages, but more of the disadvantages uh, we come across with this technique. So, to overcome these particular issues, uh, Dr. Pace and Richardson have developed a mucostratic impression technique in uh, 1938 and they are the people first explained the role of uh, Pascal's law and interfacial uh, surface tension uh, and their role in the retention of uh, maxillary complete denture. Then followed by the selective impression technique which was developed by the Bocher in 1950 and this selective pressure impression technique has the combined uh, advantages of both the mucostatic and mucocompressive impression technique. So in this, from uh, 1938 onwards, that is the uh, development of mucostatic impression technique onwards, the concern about the supporting structures or the preservation of the supporting structures has been uh, started. The first impression technique developed by Green Brothers that is called the Miko Compress Impression Technique, also called as Functional Impression Technique. And they are the first uh, people utilizes all the denture bearing area or foundation area for denture retention. The main objective of this technique is to attain better retention for the dentures. The dentures may fit well during mastication and sometimes they may lift up due to the tissue rebounding nature at the rest condition. So this results a premature contact uh, in occlusion. So because of this uh, compressive nature of this technique, the continuous pressure exertion over the soft tissue uh, may limit the blood circulation and leads to the underlying bone desorption. So that's why this technique was uh, uh, not uh, carried for a long time due to this particular disadvantages. To, uh, perform this uh, particular technique, we need to use the uh, rigid impression materials like uh, impression compound or uh, uh, elastomer heavy body. After noticing a uh, few disadvantages with the uh, Miko compressive impression technique, Dr. Henry Pace and Richardson has uh, proposed and popularized uh, Miko static impression theory. They are also called as a minimal pressure impression technique or passive or non-pressure or anatomic form of uh, impression techniques. So in this technique, they, they are given high regards for tissue health and the preservation of the foundation structures. Here the oral mucous membrane uh, was recorded under uh, absolute relaxed condition in an open jaw technique. This particular technique best suits for the sharp and knife edge ridges condition as well as also flabby tissue conditions. So here we use oversized or a space tray to accommodate more of a low visco viscous material to record the oral tissues. There won't be any border molding procedures is performed and here the close adaptation of denture base to the mucosa happens with the two uh, phenomena that is uh, Pascal's law and interfacial surface tension. Pascal's law is the phenomenon uh, that says any pressure applied to a confined fluid is transmitted equally in all directions. Since the soft tissues are confined under a denture, 
any pressure applied will be transmitted in all directions. And also interfacial surface tension is mainly uh, uh, influenced and the efficiency is, uh, depends on the quality and the quality quantity of the saliva which gives a good adhesive and uh, cohesive properties to the dentures. So here with the, uh, this particular technique, the stability aspect will be very good, but they show poor peripheral seal. That's why the retention will be compromised. So by the end of this particular uh, slide discussion, we need to remember these three aspects. That is non diseased impression materials is preferable for this particular uh, impression technique as well as individual trays required and the most preferable denture base is a metal one. And the last uh, aspect is a selective pressure impression technique which was uh, developed and proposed by Dr. Boucher in 1950. This particular technique has uh, advantages of both uh, mucostatic and muco impression concepts. This technique uh, gained popularity because the preservation of tissues and uh, equilibrium between the resilient and the non-resilient tissues was very well implemented. This theory consists of a few important aspects that is maximum covering of uh, foundation structures, border molding and uh, implementation of the post pelter seal. So here the first point is the maximum covering of foundation tissues. To gain this, the impression must extend as much denture barrier as possible without interfering with the limiting structures. Because the foundation tissue which has the magical mucosa will have a good resistance to the compression load. So that's why the primary stress bearing areas of maxilla and the mandible will be recorded under the pressure. Whereas the secondary stress bearing areas of uh, both the arches will be recorded under minimal pressure. Whereas the relieving structures that is incisor papilla, mid palate and uh, uh, maxillar or mandibular tori or the crest of the mandibular residual ridge will be recorded without pressure. So uh, these different aspects, different combination of these tissues will be recorded under different uh, uh, pressure applications. The second aspect is the border molding. Border molding is uh, done perf or performed against the directions of the muscle fibers uh, to record its functional position. So that's why uh, the final dangers will be uh, more retentive uh, and it won't uh, dislodge uh, in oral functions. So to perform this border molding, the open mouth technique is the preferred because the operator need to see or evaluate uh, the efficiency of the border molding. And also, uh, as I told you before, the implementation of the posterior petal seal and uh, gaining uh, uh, advantage of this particular uh, um, seal is important for the betterment of the maxillary denture retention. So here the more uh, attention is given to the three uh, aspects that is maximum covering of foundation structures and border molding in posterior petal seal. To conclude this discussion, I would say selective pressure impression technique is the most widely used and accepted technique in the field of completely edentulous impressions. But it doesn't mean that the other two techniques are not worthy. Based on the clinical situations, we need to select the appropriate technique to give proper justification to that particular case. With this, I have to conclude. Thank you.